The great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you so much, DigiKey. Every single Lady Ada uses our power of engineering to help you, yes, you find things on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what are you searching for this week? Okay, so um, this is actually, sometimes I just look online and I'm like, hey, what? I'm like, I read the blogs and stuff. And I saw this post, it was just a couple of weeks ago, um, from OH8 Hubs. And they had this post, you know, about, they were using um, one of those, like, uh, chi chargers or like a mag charger with their phone and it's like an apple device and um they were doing vhf work and they actually were noticing that there was some radio interference on vhf and um they showed oh hey you know if you ever have a device and like these are very, you know the whole thing is an emi machine like it manufactures emi um and so it you know if it you know maybe it was not within the spec or maybe it was you know i don't know but they said, oh, they really reduced it by putting on a clamp on ferrite uh, bead. And I was like, oh, yeah, those are really useful. Um, so let's go to the overhead because I happen to have a cable that has these built in. So this is what you normally see. Uh, this is a USB cable. Um, I mean, although you don't see it as much anymore, although I don't know why, but maybe like USB hosts are, or USB uh, devices are um, better at reducing EMI in different ways. Maybe they have like inline resistors or like a uh, lower drive strength. But uh, this cable um, USB to mini has a uh, ferrite bead implemented or installed on both ends, which is like pretty serious. Um, maybe it was required for the product that this shipped with, uh, who knows. But um, these are molded in um, and, you know, if you can get molded in, great. But as you saw, there's some cases where you have a device post installation where you want a clamp on ferrite bead um and you know you would use test equipment to determine whether or not it's passing um the emi floor that you're looking for they, they're not like specified for like oh this will reduce emi by this much like, they are specified by you know the width and thickness inner diameter outer diameter material um but there's no like magic number like oh use this size for this frequency to reduce it this much it does depend a lot about the product that you're using the cable length you know the drive strength the amount of current draw etc cetera, etc cetera. so um let's find you know then they were like they did uh go through the data sheet and um check it out i think they bought it from a british company but it turns out digikey stocks this stuff as well so let's go to the computer and I'll show you, you can get uh, ferrites. So, you know, in general, people use ferrites um, as chips. And we use this in a lot of our designs, like an inline ferrite between your digital and analog uh, power. It has some resistance at high frequencies it, and the resistance increases. So like at high frequencies, the resistance is higher. At low frequencies, the resistance is basically zero. Um, and so if you set it up like as an RC filter, it, it kind of blocks that high frequency noise from coming through. Um, there's also cores if you want to, of course, make your own inductors. I don't know how many people do that these days. But what we want are cable ferrites. And we saw even the icon was indicative. So a lot of these come, um, you know, like for the cable we showed where you would put it on and then mold over it. Um, this one's kind of cool, it has like two apertures. So you can have, you know, two areas. Uh, there's also flat cables, um, you know, for, for uh, ribbons. Um, I think, you know, I, I don't want to pull out my Apple II um, floppy drive, but I remember it had like some, I think it had a, a, a ribbon cable and a ferrite that the ribbon went through. But we want one that's clamp on. So let's, first off, let's go only for active because we don't want to get something that isn't available right now. And for design, there's a couple, there's clamp, clip together, and hinge. And I think like we should just do all of those. I'll also get the dash just in case uh, we need it. And then let's also only look for in stock. And that gives us a lot of options, like 270 options. Um, all those look pretty good. So this is what they look like, right? And you put the cable through. Um, you can, uh, they are specified for the resistance at you know high frequency, usually like, like 30 megahertz or 100 megahertz. Um, the higher the homage, the more resistant it's going to be at those high frequencies. But, you know, it also will, um, you know, the, you might have to pay more, but they might be bigger. Um, so you'll have to decide what size you want. Um, let's see what else we want. I think 
I think we want only the round type. And so let's do that. And then the material, um, the material is going to like, you know, affect the, um, that response curve, as you saw. You know, what I did is actually, I just actually looked like what was like the most popular one. And uh, there were, you know, quite a few options. Um, it looks like Fairrite, which is like Fairrite, but like Fairrite, just, I don't know, it's a good name. Um, the one, you know, there, a lot of these are good. I think I found this one, you know, they had 43,000 stock, nice and small. What I liked is that, you know, it had a pretty big um, inner diameter, you know, a quarter inch wide cable can fit through it. Um, so this would do a job very well. Uh, and of course it clips on and off. Once you've clipped it on, you might want to um, use some tape or something to keep it. You don't want it to slide up and down. You want it to be like, you know, near the connector. And then of course, in the data sheet, um, you know, this is clearly layered. This is their thing. They will give you, um, you know, what is the resistance at the frequency, the impedance at the frequency. So depending on the frequency that you want to block, you know, you'll want to get one different materials, LF, 28, and HF, these are different materials. If you want to block out gigahertz, one gigahertz, HF is going to be like your bag. But if you're like, no, I need to block everything over, you know, five to 10 megahertz or something, uh, you want LF. So choose the different material. Um, it looks like they've got some good ideas. This is kind of a nice data sheet. And then, of course, they will give you the specs for all of the different sizes, including um, there's CAD files and uh, dimensional data. So it looks like they kind of have everything covered. Um, you know, I don't know if this person was, you know, I think they kind of just bought a couple different um, beads and they do have bead kits, I think, at DigiKey. And they just clip on the one until, I mean, I remember talking to an engineer and they said to pass FCC, you just like, you just try different ferrite clamps until like basically uh, it passes. So, and then that's the one that you ship your product with. So this is my pick, but there are many, many, many options. So don't, you know, just, this is one of a wide variety of, wide variety of hinged ferrite cores. That's, that's a great search. Wait.